Chatty Kathy. You take away your name so you wouldn't take the blame? Or what's, that? what's that? You take away your name so you wouldn't get any uh, No. <laughs> I sit in your seat. Right, but okay, just to clarify, we normally have like little microphone things for you right here. Yeah. Okay, so we're good to go. Thank you. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. Okay, then we'll move forward and call the meeting to order. And can I get a motion to approve the agenda? Motion to approve. Now second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I will just make a note of the public hearing comment being canceled on our outgoing. Oh, sure. Okay. We can move forward with item number three. Approval of the minutes. We don't, do we have minutes from the last time? So no. we can just make a note <laughs> that there are no minutes and we'll be noting those at the next meeting. Correct. You will have both uh, last week's and this week's minutes at your regular September meeting. Perfect. Felt cruel to have Brenda whip them out in one day. Okay. Okay. And item number four we already covered with the cancellation, and then we will move on to item number five, new business. Thank you, Madam Chair and members of the commission. Tonight we are reviewing final plat for Meridian Fields, which is a DR Horton development. It's DR Horton's first development in Carver, which is exciting for the city. So a little bit of history of when we've seen the project before. The concept plan came before the Planning Commission in February along with the City Council. Preliminary plat was before the Planning Commission in June, City Council in July. Rezoning was on a similar schedule. If you'll remember, this project has also required annexation and a comprehensive plan amendment. So it had a lot of moving parts. So we are at the final planning stage, the final plat for Meridian Fields. Some context of where the project is located. It is just south of Highway 212. It is northwest of Carver Elementary School, um, south of Fleet Farm. So if the yellow arrows aren't glaring enough, that's the property we're discussing tonight. The rezoning for Meridian Fields, they took the property that was recently annexed, which goes to the default classification of agriculture to R2. So the development does meet our standard city code R2 district. So on the screen are some development details. So the lot size, the setbacks are on the screen now. You'll see that the proposed districts by Meridian Fields do comply with the R2 district in the city code. So slightly larger than the minimum lot size. Lot width is five feet greater. Front yard setback is 25. Shoot, I didn't flip those again. Uh, the rear is 25 feet and sides are seven and a half. So a look at the preliminary plat. Tonight we are reviewing 36 of the 83 lots that we've seen at preliminary and concept level. So this project will be done in two phases. Tonight, 36 lots. Uh, future time, 47 to come. So anticipate that this will be before the Planning Commission and City Council at an additional meeting for final plat again. So a visual, this was the concept that they submitted pretty early in the planning process but gives you a better visual of the lots that are being platted tonight for final plat. So the 36 lots are outlined in the red dash line. The outlot with the ponding will also be included but just gives you a good idea of the location of the lots. Something to note with this project, um, staff has determined with the fire department that Spring Creek Drive will have a street name change west of Jonathan Carver Parkway. So moving east at Spring Creek Drive, it wraps through the Spring Creek neighborhood along the New Meadows development as well. And then moving west, it's labeled here as Minnesota Drive. So 
It gives the fire department emergency services a better idea of which direction to head when they're heading down Jonathan Carver Parkway. Since Spring Creek Drive was starting to become a pretty long street with several, several addresses on them. Moving west, it's not anticipated that Minnesota Drive will have many addresses off of it because it's a collector. So you'll see in the intersection details here, um, Jonathan Carver Parkway is running north-south. And then you can see the intersection of Minnesota Drive directly across is Spring Creek Drive for the Spring Creek neighborhood. You'll see that this intersection likely looks pretty hefty for the amount of homes that are coming in right now. So it's been reviewed by uh, Carver County, the city's engineer, and the development engineer that this intersection will be able to handle development anticipated west as well. So once Meridian Fields goes in and we continue to move west with our development, we won't need to shut down Minnesota Drive to get the intersection to a state that can handle the amount of traffic. So if you think about the property just north of this corner, it's commercial. We've also been reviewing this intersection with a commercial user in mind, thinking about the number of trips that that might generate, and that might generate related to the eventual 83 homes in Meridian Fields and then everything further west as well. So thinking about the striping plan for what's going to happen on Jonathan Carver Parkway, uh, it's flipped for the other orientation now. So Jonathan Carver Parkway is running east-west. You can see that there is a dedicated turn lane going into Minnesota Drive, along with a turn lane going into the Spring Creek neighborhood with a through street. So similar coming both from the north and south. So there will be dedicated turn lanes to get in to the development onto Minnesota Drive. Through the planning process, it's been identified that there needs to be some substantial noise reduction from Highway 212. So this is a cross-section of the homes closest to Highway 212 with the amount of distance that will be between them and the first lane of traffic. So you'll see that there is a berm along with a heavy landscape buffer that will allow for some noise reduction from Highway 212. It also has been indicated that DR Horton will be using uh, more advanced construction materials, so windows will be upgraded, so sound inside the homes will not be affected by Highway 212. Moving into the landscape plan, this is a really good visual along Highway 212 of the amount of trees that are going to be planted. It's also been identified that the commercial user at the corner of Minnesota Drive and Jonathan Carver Parkway likely will need a buffer as well. So to put residential homes directly next to a commercial user, we have asked that the developer installs a pretty hefty landscape buffer. So to give the people on the residential side a, couple, a little bit of time for those trees to mature a bit and become both a noise buffer, a light buffer, just a good separation in case it's a parking lot directly next to them. There's also trees throughout the development. You'll see the development does align with our typical neighborhood standard of one tree per lot, and then those significant buffers, both at the entrance of the neighborhood, along the commercial property line, as, as well as Highway 212. Some examples of the types of homes that DR Horton is proposing. So it's their express line. It is DR Horton's first time in Carver, so this will be a new type of home for Carver, and their express line is hitting um, the price point. I'm gonna ask Deb to probably clarify if she comes up for questions on the price point. But a good example of what the houses might look like. So that is a very brief overview of several of the items that are included in the final plat tonight. I'll open it up for discussion. Like I mentioned, Deb Ridgeway is here from DR Horton if you have specific development questions. Otherwise, I'm happy to take any questions. All right, so at the intersection of Minnesota Drive and um, Oops, sorry, I'm going the wrong whatever's way. through this, Fields Drive, I thought we had talked about there potentially being a roundabout at that intersection yes. with access to the commercial property and the residential. Is so, that still planned? No, it is not. Through study of both the city engineer, the development engineer, and the county, it was decided that that roundabout would clog really quickly based okay. on the amount of homes that are anticipated west of Meridian Fields. So it was determined that a four, uh, controlled four-way is a better option for that location. Okay. Um, can you go to the cross-section with sure. the freeway on it? That one. So I know 
there's shown on here the service road mm -hmm. that exists today, which I believe is the access to the property, the house that's on there right now. Yes. Is there a potential that that road would have, would eventually be replaced by like a sound wall, sound barrier, or something like that? So as part of the preliminary plat and final plat, the property where the existing house is has been what we call ghost platted. So it shows what lots could look like on that property. It's anticipated that someday that property will be part of the Meridian Fields development. So that access road will no longer be needed. There likely could be additional berming, landscaping, or a sound wall added in that location. Okay. Does... Um See, it's a state highway? It is. Yeah, so does the state have plans when they, to put a sound barrier there, especially as they plan to make it a four-lane west of Carver? Sure. So MnDOT does review this plan since, since it is adjacent to yeah. Highway 212. They haven't made an indication of what that might look like right now. I anticipate okay. they'll do the, an independent noise study when Highway 212 is widened. So is that is that sort of gauche property there going to continue to have access onto that service road, or is it planned that they will have access to Meridian Curve or whatever that is? So as long as the property owner chooses to stay in that property, the service road will be their access. Okay. All right. So I was a little worried about that outlot in between the road and the sure. property and going, how are they getting in? Okay. Is that service road only servicing that property at this point? Currently, yes. Is it city maintained? No. All right. Um, I was a little surprised that this didn't have any PRD, that they're meeting all of the standard um, lot widths, setbacks, all of that kind of stuff of our R2. It is surprising based on recent development. Yeah. So can you remind me the, uh, the residential that's south of it, Copper Hills? Yes. Is that R2? It's an R2 PRD. Okay. So the base zoning of it is R2. Okay. All right. Thank you. That helps me with that. My questions for the moment. I just have a couple clarifying questions on sure. the maps. For the outlots? Yes. Um, let's see. Can you go to a picture of... Okay. Where it, okay is that is helpful? That outlot B. At the that south part of the property. The circle, you know, the little pond. Sure. But on the other map, it says outlaw F. Sure. So this uh, this was pretty early in the process. It's the pretty picture that they gave to us. So I just wanted to give it as a good visual. Sure. Refer to the final plat for the outlots. Because the city owned, the city, it says outlots E and F are going to the owner. Right, so that is not one of them, right? The city's going to maintain that. Correct. Pond. So DR Horton worked with the property owner of the house that's going to remain. Those were some remnant parcels that likely didn't have much use to either the developer or the city, and that property owner has uh, indicated that they would like to own those two properties. So can we just identify what those properties are? Sure. Just to clarify. Are they close to the property owner? So yes. So if you okay. see my mouse right now, it's directly south of their property and then east. Okay. So it essentially makes their property a bit larger. Okay. Well, yeah, that sounds great. Because I was, it didn't make sense to me that they would, we're going to have that area. Right. Okay. And eventually uh, when that property does come in for development, those two outlots will be helpful to have it both connect to the street and make it a more viable lot with outlot H there. I didn't see anywhere where the trail or sidewalk was located. Oh, sorry. Is there a better map that you can point it out to me at? Yes. Okay. Well, maybe it's not on that one. Get you in without significant grading work on it, hopefully. Maybe not. 
be a good one. Okay, so there is a sidewalk that runs along Fields Drive here and then up through Meridian Curve. So one side of the street will include a sidewalk. Okay, so it'll be looped. Yes. Around yep. that whole area. Okay. Um, was I didn't see a tree preservation. Yeah, that's a good question. Drawing. So the property currently is used as a farm field and there aren't significant trees on the property right now. There are some in that outlot surrounding the house that will remain. Mm -hmm. So a tree preservation plan wasn't needed. Um, under the city code today, unless you're taking out 40% of trees, you need to hit the amount that you need to replace. Okay. So in a really anecdotal way to say it, the trees that are being planted throughout Meridian Fields are a net gain for the city. Yeah. I didn't even, I guess I didn't also see the detail on the landscaping plan. The landscaping the erosion plan came control a bit late. And the wetland buff, buff, buffer plan. Erin, so, can you repeat what you said? Yeah, we were in a bit of a mad scramble the Friday before a holiday and the landscape plan came a little bit late. Okay. I'd be happy to upload it to the website though. That'd be great. Or if you, do you want to take a look at it now? If we can take just a brief look at it. Yeah. That'd be great. So this is the page that was in the slide. So really significant buffering along Highway 212, the commercial property. Uh, moves into some specifics along Minnesota Drive. So this is a kind of an interesting property that to gain access to the site, they're going over private property. So it's the United Property piece. That is, um, they worked out an agreement to allow for them to essentially have an easement across their property. So once DR Horton's property starts, that's where those boulevard trees start. It's okay. anticipated that when the property directly east of it develops, there will be additional trees. But since that's not DR Horton's property, they aren't responsible for those plantings. Okay. All right, that's helpful. Thank you. Sure. Madam Chair, I have a couple of comments and questions. <coughs> Uh, first of all, I just want to tip my cap to Dr. Horton. Uh, welcome to the city of Carver. Uh, I think it kind of shows, you know, there's demand not only for residents to live in the city, but also uh, developers as well. Uh, I am just south of the property there on the other side of the school fields. Uh, so I think it's a, an exciting time as well uh, because just as of today, if not maybe a little bit yesterday, uh, they're starting to move dirt now. Uh, so I think that's pretty exciting for the developer. Uh, my initial concerns kind of coming into this meeting without not having the proper documentations was the intersection going into the uh, property uh, because of, I think, a lot of concerns with the heavy traffic on Johnson Cover Parkway and so forth. I know that there's a quarter study going on right now. Uh, this kind of shows the inter intersection details, which um, I'm liking to see, you know, the overflow with uh, Jonathan Carver Parkway as it is now and then coming out of the Meridian Fields. The quick question I have for City Planner Smith would be, is this gonna be over time a controlled stoplight intersection or is it just gonna be kind of a four-way or maybe a two-way uh, sure. because of obviously on the west side of Jonathan Carver Parkway there, you have two turn, uh, left-hand turn lanes going north on Jonathan Carver Parkway. Yes, so we've had that discussion with the county pretty extensively, talking about Meridian Fields, thinking about the commercial user that might come in just east. It is anticipated that at some future date that will be a stopped controlled intersection with a full stoplight. At this time with the 83 homes that Meridian Fields is bringing in, it's not meeting the amount of trips that warrant a full stoplight, but in the future it is anticipated there. So with that being said, if, even if the build out is with the two left hand turn lanes going north on John Covered Parkway, would one of them be blocked off? So you're only utilizing one of those lanes compared to when the 
a controlled stoplight gets put in? Yes. Okay. So this is planned for when Jonathan Carver Parkway is two lanes going both directions. So those two turn lanes will allow for more traffic to clear out of this development. And thinking about our comp plan, the amount of room we have west, it was important that we were thoughtful about the amount of traffic that could clip through here pretty quickly. So that's where the second turn lane moving left came in. Okay. And as far as the interim process of until Jonathan Carr Parkway potentially goes to be widened to be a mm -hmm. two-lane road north and south and so forth, uh, will this still kind of layout be as it is as right now in Jonathan Carver Parkway where you'd have a if you're going south on Jonathan Carver, you have a left-hand turn lane, a straight lane, as well as a right-hand turn lane going west into the property? Right. So the two turn lanes coming out of Minnesota Drive to head north on Jonathan Carver Parkway, it's two lanes going into one, so that won't function. Uh, it's likely anticipated that one of the turn lanes will be striped fully, so there will be some pretty clear indication that it's not two lanes when this first phase goes in, because it would be two turn lanes going into one lane moving north, which wouldn't function at this time. Great. Minnesota Drive will ultimately connect with to the south what? Any of the roads that we currently have platted? Not today. Not today. Nope. So it will serve up to the Meridian Fields property. Right. But ultimately that, that drive, I mean, there's the sort of curved lines heading south. Is there a currently platted street that it was planned to line up with? No, not today. Okay. All right. Do we have the developer here? Can we ask the developer some questions? <laughs> Good evening. My name is Deb Ridgway with DR Horton. I just want to start by saying thank you for um, having this special meeting. It allows us to get on the next city council meeting so that we can get our first phase of um, development completed. We're getting tight in the season, so we're trying to perform miracles here, but we think that we can get it done with this schedule, so thank you. But I'm here to answer any questions. Can you tell us a little bit more about the houses that are planned for this site? I know we got a little bit of an introduction. Yep, so this is our Express Home series, which um, is our what we call our more affordable homes so um, with the uh, there's not very many options with the home when a buyer comes in there's a certain package that they get to choose from I believe it's three different packages as far as the interior finishes so it allows the pricing to um, be kept down um, we're anticipating that the homes will start you know between 300 and 350 and then that would um, depend on, like I said, the different packages that, that a homeowner would choose or a buyer would choose. And what is the typical size of the homes? Um, I don't have that in front of me, but um, I believe they're around 1,200 square feet. So it's, it's really a side split home. So you walk in on a main level. There's a kitchen, a living room, and a dining room. And there's a few stairs behind the garage area would be the upper level would be the bedrooms and then you can go down into an additional kind of family room an additional bedroom bathroom situation okay. they've been we've um, we've built the neighborhood in Shakopee it's called Windermere um, those homes sold out within like four months of opening that that community so um, you know, we're pretty, pretty bullish on the product, and we think that it definitely uh, fills a need for price point, especially. I only have a clarifying question from the prelim to now on sure. the lot number, just to make sure we're accurate. Yes, so it was 83. They have 83. 36 currently. Yep, and, and then phase two is anticipated to be 47. So in total, the number has not changed. It's just the split of 36 and 47. Okay, because originally it was 34. Oh, sure, right. Right, 
So, so none of the, so you're the same, we just added two more houses in the initial phase? Or yes, we, so the number of lots overall has not changed. Okay. I was trying to figure out how that worked. <laughs> Thank you. And I'll also make a mention, um, from preliminary plat to final plat, there were no substantial changes. So the plans that you're seeing are really similar to that we reviewed at preliminary plat. There are some small engineering tweaks, but nothing overall for lots or lot sizes. And then the last question I have is really under parkland dedication, only because I don't really understand the process there. Sure. I know the preliminary says the same thing as this as far as payment in lieu of parkland. Is mm -hmm. that typical? It is, yes. Okay. Great. Um, I think all the clarification with the buffers and the landscaping was really kind of important to go over, so thank you. Sure. I don't have any further questions. Anybody else? Comments? No comments, Jim? No. <laughs> Chair, I'll make a motion to recommend approval of the final plat for Meridian Fields. I'll we'll second that. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 And opposed? Motion carries. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll be seeing you more. <laughs> um, item number six communications. I would just like to echo Deb's comments and say thank you for having this special meeting. I am knocking on wood right now, but I'm not seeing anything right now for a September 20th meeting. So I'll keep you posted on that. I usually know about a week before, so by next Friday I should have a firm handle on it, but right now I'm not sure we'll have a meeting. What was the other development that we were going to review tonight? Hawthorne Ridge. Hawthorne Ridge, so that won't be coming in the 20th? So again, it's a DR Horton product. Oh, no. It is, yes. So we are still working through preliminary plat with them. I'm anticipating it might be a few meetings before we see that one again. Okay, and that will be preliminary plat? Correct. Okay. So where, we'll where is Hawthorne Ridge? It's the Ellen Redmond property. <coughs> it's near Sunny Ridge. And hmm. Blanking on the one north of that. That's the street name. That's the street name. We <laughs> <laughs> never refer to them like that. Okay. That's all I have, though. Thank you. Okay. Anything from you, Courtney? No. Nothing. Okay. Sounds good. I'll file a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you.